go back up to the animation because that's what we want. Going to oh, I... shit. Begin by talking about the different stages of sleep and the corresponding waveforms that you see on an EEG. Hey. Then I'm going to talk about the normal sleep physiology. So how, physiology. you know, how sleep progresses throughout the night. All right. And I'll conclude the video by talking about some abnormal sleep pathology and tying those pathologies back to the different stages of sleep. There'll be a couple useful mnemonics as we go. And by the end of this video, you'll know everything that you need to know about sleep. So let's get started by talking about sleep stages and EEG waveforms. I think the best way to approach this is to say, what is the level of consciousness? So you've got two options here. You can either be awake or you can be asleep. Now let's start on the left side and talk about fucking genius about the awake conscious state. When you're awake, you can be two types of awake. You can either be alert or you can be tired, right? We've all experienced this. <laughs> Life in general, baby. It's either you're alert as fuck or you're tired as fuck. I love it. I love it. This guy, this guy's making a lot of fucking sense. <laughs> oh, like, all right before either you're able to have conscious effort mentally in which case you're awake alert or you're really like dozing off and getting tired and wondering when am i going to go take my nap in that case you're awake tired now if you're awake alert you're going to have beta waves on an eeg and if you're beta <laughs> look at that see i knew it i was giving out that alpha energy for fucking days Let's oh, go, you're dude. Tired, you're going to have alpha waves on the EEG. Now, let me pause for a second and say that the reason I'm stressing what type of waves you'll see on an EEG is because for some reason this shows up all the time on USMLE and Comlex. The test writers love to quiz you about what type of waves you will see. Fucking so it's really writers. important that you memorize these and that you understand what they look like if you want that 280 on your test. So beta waves and alpha waves for alert and tired, beta. respectively. Now, how do you remember this? Well, there's beta waves when you're busting out work, and there's mm. alpha waves when you're about to fall asleep. So about. remember, beta waves for when you're alert and awake, so you're able to give conscious mental energy. This is how you... Oh, where's my alphas at? Eh? Nice. Let's go. Let's give us some of that fucking alpha energy, bro. Let's do it. I'm fucking tired as hell, man. I'm depressed. Fuck. Fucking shit, bro. I'm alpha. I'm alpha. Uh, I'm alpha as fuck. You feel after you have a cup of coffee and you're studying for your test, and then the alpha waves when you are, you know, it's 3.30, 4, 4 p.m. in the afternoon and you're starting to think about taking a nap. What you see beneath the beta and the alpha waves is what those actually look like on an EEG. It's not very important that you know what it looks like visually, but if you're trying to get the perfect score on your exam, then I would know it. So again, just to really hammer it home and say it one more time, if you're alert, you have beta waves because you're busting out work. And if you're tired, you have alpha waves because you're about alpha. to fall asleep. So that's the awake consciousness. Got it. Now let's talk about the right side of this flow diagram, right? What happens when you're asleep? That's really the bulk of this lecture and what you came here to learn. So being asleep can be separated into two substages, non-REM and REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement, because as you'll see, one of the hallmark symptoms of REM sleep is the fact that your eyes are oscillating back and forth. Now, REM sleep is its own stage, but non-REM sleep is further subdivided into three more stages. Fuck. That includes N1, N2, and N3. And the reason it's named N is for non-REM1, non-REM2, and non-REM3. So each of these three stages, N1, N2, and N3, have their own EEG waveforms, and I'm going to put them on the slide now. Ah. The N1 stage is categorized, oh, categorized by theta waves, and that's what theta waves look like. In theta. The N2 stage is categorized by both K complexes and sleep spindles. And oh, I understand shit. that it's a little small of an EEG waveform, but the sleep spindle is the really fine, close together squiggly lines 
And uh-huh. the K complex is the thing that kind of looks like what you might see on an ECG. It's more of an upward spike and a downward deflection. Beep. So those are sleep spikes and monitor. K complexes, and they're both seen in N2 or non-REM stage two. Delta waves looks like like my first drawing of a like <laughs> like looks like one of my first drawings for actual waves in an ocean. Just fucking draw the hill. La 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 la. I'm I'm rocking the delta waves. I like that. I, I'm vibing with delta waves. I like delta waves. Theta looks and rough. And then finally, in N3, you see delta waves. And shown in green is what the delta Fuck wave yeah. looks like. Now, REM, I told you, is its own stage. And mm. REM is categorized by beta waves, right? So the same oh. waves that you see in the awake alert stage no, are also dude. seen in the REM stage. And because of that, oh. REM stage is called paradoxical sleep. Because even though you are in this very deep state of sleep, it has the same EEG waveform as what it looks like when you're awake. So That's what's up, dude. That's what they're trying to tell you, bro. It's fucking these beta waves. All right? You can never be alert. You always got to be fucking tired as fuck and never get actually any sleep. Otherwise, you're going to be getting all these fucking beta waves all up in your grill, and that's going to be shit. You don't want to do that, dude. Oh, my chicas and chicos and chicks fucking we're all sleeping dude we don't want any of those fucking beta waves fuck them hell no dude fuck that shit oh fuck a beta wave get yourself an alpha get theta get that k complex and that sleep spindle in your fucking body dude all right and then ride the delta wave back all the way to the shore all right i'll see you on the beaches dude fuck ya paradoxical so this is i got so much fucking energy today holy shit i love it pause the video if you want to look at this slide for a little bit more but i'm gonna move on so this is what we've covered so far and now let's talk about normal sleep physiology so what i want to do is just Fill in this chart. I think it's the easiest way to approach this information. (laughs) What alignment are you? (laughs) This is your alignment chart in D&D. This is what's up. So, uh, technically I would, (laughs) I'm more of a, (laughs) I think my, I think my elf is more of a, an awake tired characteristic. Yeah. And my EK, my EEG waveform is an N2. Yeah. Because I'm a Pisces, that's really, uh, that's the only reason why. Allow you to form a conceptualization in your brain. So here are the stages of sleep. We've already talked about each of these stages, and we've already talked about their EEG waveforms, so I'm just going to fill them in for completeness sake so that you can refer back to it as I go through the <laughs> characteristics here. So for awake alert and for awake tired, there's really not much that you need to know. So I'm just going to put NA and we'll skip those two. But do memorize beta and alpha waves because that's very, very important. Gotcha, bro. For N1, you need to know that this is the lightest stage of sleep. And oftentimes you'll see sudden myoclonic jerks. Now, I'm sure this has happened. <laughs> the fuck you say, bro? You calling me a fucking jerk, dude? Why don't you say that to my fucking face, dude? Huh? Huh? You want to say something, bro? You want to say something, bro? You want to say something, bro? You want to come at me about my fucking theta and delta waves, bro? I'll fucking kick your ass, dude. Dude, what the fuck? What the fuck's your channel now? Dirty medicine? Dirty medicine. You're, I'm fucking calling you out, dude. You want to talk shit about my fucking beta and theta? Mm, theta, delta, mm, fucking K complex and mm, the same thing. Blah, 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 bro. Come at me, dude. Meet me in fucking... <laughs> I'm trying to think of like some random address now. So, meet, uh, meet me a bit of, uh, meet me a bit of Park, Connecticut, dude. Come at me, represent my town. I'll come out of my fucking suburb, dude, and meet you in my cul-de-sac, dude. Call me a jerk, <laughs> a myoclonic jerk. Latest stage of sleep, sudden jerks. Find it in. Oh, like body jerks. Of course, he's talking about body jerks. Your bed, or you had a quick jerk in your arm or your Uh, leg, and then all of a sudden it woke you up. We, uh, you know, it's very common. Most of us have experienced that, and this is where it's occurring in N1. 
Now, N1 makes up about 5 to 10% of total sleep time. There's a little mnemonic here that I use to remember the sudden myoclonic jerks. And I just rewrite the word myoclonic and I replace the NI with N1. So sudden myoclonic jerks and the spelling is exactly the same. And it helps me remember that those myoclonic jerks occur in N1 stage of sleep. Let's move on to N2. So N2, we already talked about, is, is very categorized by those K complexes and sleep spindles. But the other stuff that you need to know is that this is where bruxism occurs. Bruxism is a fancy term for teeth grinding. Ah! And this is 50% of total sleep. So most sleep is N2. Most of the sleep throughout the night is N2. That's very, very high yield to know. For N3, we already talked about that you see delta waves. But the other bit of information that you need to know is that this is the deepest sleep that you have. And it takes up about 10 to 20% of the total sleep time throughout the night. Interestingly, as you go yeah. through, the, through the night, the length of the N3 sleep goes down. So it's important physiologically to, to get the N3 sleep early in the night, which is why you want to give yourself plenty of time to go to bed, mm. especially when you're studying for USMLE. And give yourselves the day, dude. That's what you fucking need. That's what you need, bro. Complex. Let's conclude by talking about REM. So REM, just like awake alert, shows the beta wave. So that's why it's called paradoxical sleep. And in REM, aside from the rapid eye movement, which is obviously what REM stands for, people are typically atonic or amobile. So they're just laying there and they're really in this deep stage of sleep and their eyes are oscillating back and forth. The other thing that you should know about REM sleep is that you have an increase in your autonomic. So in REM sleep, heart rates typically are elevated and there's classic penile tumescence. And for whatever reason, that shows up all the time on exams. Don't ask me why, but it does. I'm going to have to look that up in a separate window, my dude. What you talking about my penis, dude? Too much. Nocturnal penile tumescent. Tumescent. This is a spontaneous erection of the penis during sleep and when waking up. Oh, bro, it's fucking morning wood. Nice. Along with nocturnal clitora tumescent. Oh, my fellow chicos, you're getting horny? See, it is also known as a sleep related erection or morning. Whoa, let's go. We're all horny up in here from fucking sleep, dude. Wait. Yeah, because of the <laughs> Yeah, because it's the beta waves. That's what it is. It's the fucking beta waves. Yeah, them betas are always horny. Cause they don't get nothing. Ooh! <laughs> I don't know where this I don't know where this character come from. I don't I have no idea, but I'm I mean feeling it. And one of the ways that you can remember this is that REM sleep has beta waves. And if you want to remember that, you can remember that in addition to beta waves, REM sleep has boners. So the B <laughs> for beta, the B for boner. It helps you kind of tie all that. Damn it. So, uh, dirty medicine, you sly son of a bitch. All right, you know what? We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. Back together. REM sleep takes up about 15% of your total sleep and each REM stage is in itself 90 to 120 minutes. And that is also very good to know. So at this point, we've talked about the sleep stages. I've told you about the EEG waveforms. We went through the normal sleep physiology. Now let's wrap up the video by talking about the abnormal sleep or the pathologic sleep. So again, I think the easiest way to approach this is to just simply go through a chart fill it in and allow you to make those visual connections and conceptualize all this information. For awake alert and awake tired, there's no pathology there, okay? So we're gonna skip those stages. But let's begin by talking about N1. So in N1, this is affected by obstructive sleep apnea. And when somebody has obstructive sleep apnea, it actually increases their N1 sleep. And the way that you would remember that and my mnemonic is to write obstructive sleep apnea and replace the E with the one. So just like I did that for myoclonic jerks, I do the same thing for obstructive sleep apnea. And it just, you know, visually, I can remember it. 
For N2, this is where bruxism occurs, and I've already alluded to that. And to remember this, I rewrite the word bruxism with a K and two S's. The K stands for K complexes, and the two S's stand for sleep spindles. And that allows me to connect bruxism with the EEG waveforms so that I can remember for N2, it's bruxism, and I remember the EEG waveform. So just a nice silly little mnemonic there. For Basically, they both involve the mouth. Basically, that's what, uh, that's what it is. They both involve the mouth and basically like a kiss. Kiss, brux. Brux is the teeth grinding. Kiss is the, um, involves the, yeah. Oh, brux, brux. I mean, you could, I don't know. I think, I think since they both involve the mouth, <laughs> the mouth. <laughs> For N3, this is the stage where sleepwalking, night terrors, and bedwetting occurs. And there's no new- oh, so, <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> Whoa, dude. <laughs> nah, man, I'm not, I'm not Delta West. I'm not, I'm not a bad, I'm not a, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a fucking bad I don't know why you have to say what that was. <laughs> I don't know, fuck, I mean, fuck me, dude, what the fuck? Demonic here, but it kind of makes sense. If you think about N3 being the deepest stage of sleep, while sleepwalking, night terrors, and bedwetting, all of those things classically happen in people that have no recollection of it happening. And the reason that they have trouble remembering it is because they're in the deepest stage of sleep. Now, it's not depicted on this slide, but this is also the stage of sleep where if you get woken up out of N3, you have something called sleep inertia. And this may have happened to you in the past. This is when you get woken up out of sleep and even though you're awake, you have all types of cognitive difficulties. You don't know where you are. You start saying nonsense, and then maybe you go back to bed. It's very common to, for that to happen if you get woken up out of N3. Lastly, for REM, what you need to know is that this is affected by major depressive disorder, or MDD. Ooh. In patients with major depressive disorder, they have tons of changes to their REM sleep. The ones that you should memorize are shown on the slide. You have a decrease in REM latency, meaning that it, you go into REM faster. So latency refers to the amount of time it takes for something to happen. So the, if, if the amount of time it takes to get into REM goes down, it means you get into REM sleep faster. Once you're in REM sleep, there's an increased REM duration, especially mm. for the first stage of REM in the night. So the first REM in the whole night in patients with depression is longer. And then as the night goes, it kind of shortens a bit, but that first one is longer. There's also mm. an increased REM density, meaning that throughout the night, patients with major depressive disorder will be in REM more often. And if you're looking for a way to remember what all this stuff is, you know, what, what's happening basically in major depressive disorder, the summarizing statement would be these patients don't have as many deep sleeps throughout the night because they're mostly in REM and they don't really get that really refreshing N3 stage. I want to wrap up Ugh. the video by talking about narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is a pretty unique sleep disorder. We talked about this yesterday, and it's not yesterday, Monday. Being tested on exams, so I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about it. Narcolepsy is due to a deficiency of orexin producing neurons in the lateral hypothalamus. You might see it written as orexin, or you might see it written as hypocretin-1. They mean the same exact thing, so just know that they're interchangeable. You can measure orexin, and you can measure hypocretin-1 in the CSF. So sometimes, if a test writer is writing a question, CS. and they describe narcolepsy... Fuck a CFF. Cerebral spinal, uh, cerebrospinal fluid, shown in blue, is made by tissue that lines the ventricle, the ventricles, hollow spaces in the brain. It flows in and around the brain and spinal cord to help cushion them from injury and provide nutrients. Oh, so our brain is pickled, basically. Ooh can be measured in CSF. Is that what it is? Like measure? What is the event its function? Estimated to be 150 milliliters? Oh, so they, I guess they test the fluid? I'm very much guessing here, but okay. Symptoms. And they say, which of the- 
Paralyzation and daytime sleepiness. Yep. Following findings, would you expect to see the answer might? Sorry, not catap. Well, not paralyzed, but it's almost to it. Basically, it's like your muscle is getting weak as fuck. I know we. This is re repetition, but this person's not really covering over the basics. We might have new people coming in, so yeah. Be decreased hypocretin one in the cerebrospinal fluid, or decreased orexin in the cerebrospinal fluid. It's very high yield to know that. The symptoms are pretty unique, and you shouldn't miss this if they're written out in the clinical vignette. Sudden cataplexy and daytime sleepiness are the big two. So these patients have a really tough time going to sleep at night. But what happens is that they have sudden cataplexy, meaning that they'll okay. suddenly lose tone in their body and fall asleep. And you've seen this probably in movies or TV shows, um, but it's real and it does exist. And usually that cataplexy is in response to a very strong emotion. So because that, what I just described, is so unique, if you see it in a question, I really hope that you, you recognize that it's narcolepsy and can answer the question. The treatment here is modafinil. Modafinil is a central nervous system stimulant, and it helps people kind of stay awake during the day and not have daytime sleepiness um, and those sudden cataplexy events. Now, if the person is suffering from cataplexy and if the person is suffering from hallucinations regarding the feeling of being tired, um, those are called hypnagogic or hypnopompic hallucinations, you can also treat this with SSRIs or SNRIs. Those are sort of ancillary treatments that support the other symptoms, but the main treatment here is going to be modafinil. So I just wanted to spend a, a bit of time talking about narcolepsy because, again, it's very unique and there's a lot of different things that they can ask you that's usually not stuff that you've studied too, too much. But that's it for this video on sleep. I hope that this was useful to you. Please remember that if you like the content I'm putting out to check out my Patreon page, definitely subscribe and share these videos with your friends. I wish you all the best of luck. Keep it going. Oh, damn. Thank you. Class dismissed!